Um, yeah, I've got some notes here because I've actually changed slightly based on what people were talking about this morning. So I don't normally have notes. But um, what I'm going to talk about here is just a few areas that people don't really think about. And I think those areas are critical and the reason, frankly, that so many projects, thank you, fail. And it's really always a tough one. I mean, I've been talking about failed projects for like 20 years, so I'm amazed I've still got a job because nobody actually wants to hear about failed projects, but in the world of IT, there are statistics that say 60 to 70% of projects fail or fall short of expectations. In the world of marketing, MarTech, well, I guess we could argue it's a little bit too early to know, and we can all be incredibly optimistic, but I think they're probably gonna be around the same. And you know, the thing is, um, Carlos said it this morning, he said, technology seldom fails. When I started out in this industry, Technology did fail. Some of it stunk. I mean, it was really, really bad. Um, today, yeah, most of it actually works pretty well. Um, what fails is really two things, and I think some of it's been covered off quite well this morning already, so I'm not going to keep going back to that, that you really need to plan, you really need to get out all your ducks in order before you do this, that, and the other. But there's two areas I'm really going to try and focus on in the time I have today. So one is almost a sort of personal um, gripe. So I've been to India many times, and I used to work for Wipro, which for some of you is like, really? Um, but yeah, I did. I used to work for Wipro. I ran a consulting division at Wipro. So I would be incredibly presumptuous and arrogant if I were to say, I really understood Indian culture, I have a connection, because it's nonsense, I don't. I happen to like it here, and I love Indian food, but, you know, I'm not going to go that far. But think about it this way. I won't go down the Indian path too far, because you're all going to hate me, but, you know, think about it this way. Here's a tall, white, English, privately educated man coming here, there's a lot of cultural significance there, right? Well, think about it for me as an Englishman living in Boston. I've lived in the US for 20 years. I kid you not, it feels like every other week. It's not every other week, but it feels like it. There's somebody, some American wants to say to me, oh, you're English. Oh, you must like to drink tea and play cricketing or something like that. They think they're making a connection with me. Do you know the only connection they're making is between this and this? It really drives me crazy, right? I mean, I'm very nice to them most of the time, but whatever, right? And, and you're going to experience the same things. Well, that's personalization. That's what data does when you personalize things. It says, oh, he's English, therefore he must like to drink tea. Yeah, OK. Yeah, well, you've irritated me now, as opposed to getting at something going here. But I spend a lot of my time in Silicon Valley. In fact, most of our clients are in Silicon Valley, or have been historically. And I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. I used to have an office in Mountain View. I mean, if you, you want to know where to go to eat and hang out there, I can tell you. But is the Big Bang Theory, the TV program, popular here in India? Yeah? OK. Well, imagine a massive city filled with Dr. Sheldon Coopers. That is Silicon Valley. And they're going to teach us how to market and connect with people. They can't connect with one another. I mean, that's the reality we're facing here, right? So we've got marketing, we've got tech coming together. Yes, absolutely. Is a lot of that to do with data and AI and machine learning? Absolutely. I have a book coming out on that, by the way. Et cetera, et cetera, right? All of that's true. But fundamentally, we have to understand that connecting with a, another human being can never be brought down to bits and bytes. It's not as simple as that, right? So be very, very careful when you go down that route. I mean, 
one of the ways of doing it is to reframe the entire conversation. One of the ways of doing it is to say, OK, well, what really annoys my customers? Because if I fix that, at least I won't really annoy them. I mean, it sounds like really a basic place to start. Actually, it's a really good place to start. Yeah, really good place to start. So there's an airline. I won't name them because it's not fair, and they're a perfectly good airline. I won't fly with them anymore. And do you know why? Because I've got a hyphen in my name. And their website really doesn't like hyphens. And every time, it's just like, I want to cancel this. It's a stupid thing. That annoys me. Now, are there enough people with hyphens in their name that you really want to fix that? I don't know. But silly things really annoy people. Figure out. We're going to look a bit more at that as we move forward. But think about your customers. And really try and, and come from their perspective. And like all of us, the one thing we'll remember at the end of each day is the thing that really annoyed us. Because we're humans, right? So don't be the thing that really annoyed your customer. Set the bar pretty low. But here's the thing. As I said, I've been doing this a long time. And I work with a lot of companies. And I've been pushing this idea for a long, 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 long time. And some people like it, and some people don't, whatever. But I'm going to share with you something I haven't really shared before. I've been doing these kind of 360-degree analysis. And do you know what that, that's just fancy talk. Hey, it's a marketing conference. 360-degree analysis sounds a lot better than something simple, right? But I've been pushing this idea for a long time that when you as a company think you'll know your customer, let me, or somebody on my team, actually speak to your customers. In confidence, no names will ever come back. Let me do this. And in 20 years, I have never yet found a company where its customers said the same things about the company as its employees thought they would. Not once. Literally not once. And we did one just about a year ago, and, and I won't name the company. Um, but the thing is, this is a really nice company. I like these people. They've got a good product. They seem to be doing everything well. They actually have a really good CMO. I mean, they check all the boxes. But here's the thing. They told me, I mean, there's more to it than this, but they told me essentially their customers come to them because they are the market leader. Their technology is the best. It is better than everybody else's. And here's the thing. Uh, it probably is, actually. I mean, they do have a really, really good product. So I spoke to a bunch of their customers. Not one of them had a clue that this technology was market leading. You know what they all said? Everyone without exception, they are the nicest people to work with. They actually call me back. I really like these people. And when I even brought into the conversation somehow or other about the technology, they would basically say, oh, really? I didn't know that. So they didn't even know this company's competitors. So I have this product company telling me, we beat out X, Y, Z. And yet when I talk to the customer who apparently threw out this other company, they said, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been using that for years. We're never going to use that anyway. There was never even a competitive situation. The disconnect was huge. And that's normal. That's normal. Never assume you actually know what your customers think of you. Just don't. Don't make the assumption. I mean, sure, you can hire a company like ours, but you can do this yourself, right? Just get somebody independent to give a few calls. I mean, it's not rocket science, but like common sense, it's really not that common. People just don't really do it, right? Similarly, if you're going to have to readjust to the real world of your customer's needs, never, ever, ever underestimate the change within your organization. You can bring in 
and I do a lot in technology, I'm really more of a technologist, right? But you can bring in Adobe Experience Management, you can bring in HubSpot, you can do whatever you want. You change one person's job by that much, and they will not like it. They will not like it. People do not like change. And if you think you can steamroller it through, I have worked with multi-billion dollar companies who have had pretty much the lowest paid person in their company completely ruin a project because I'm not doing it. So never underestimate change within your organization. Is it challenging? Is it time consuming? Well, yeah, but at the same time, if you address it early enough and you're open and honest, by the way, hardly anybody is ever open and honest with their employees. If you're open and honest with them, you might be surprised, right? So who is actually informing your customer journey? So customer journey mapping, it's been around a long time, but it just suddenly seems to have got really trendy. So whatever, right? We'll, we'll pretend it's a new idea. But customer journey mapping, everybody should do it. I, I mean, seriously, everybody should do it. It's very important. But never do it by sitting down with your employees and asking them what the customer's journey is. They have as much idea as I do. Talk to actual customers. Right? Get that feedback. And again, it seems like common sense. And I sound like a really patronizing, privately educated Englishman who should shut up. But I'm trying to share with you experiences that, just frankly, everybody's sort of struggling with, and you don't need to. Right? These are the stupid things that can ruin your project. Don't make the same mistakes. Yeah? Change management is hard. Yeah? And it can be really hard if you want it to be. Or you can just be open and upfront and say to people, guess what, in this coming year we're going to be doing this, this, and this. And yeah, it is going to change some things, but I'd really like your input. I mean, you know, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Yeah? If you're going to do customer journey mapping, talk to actual customers. There's a great idea. Okay? That's not that hard. You'd be surprised. Most customers actually want to talk to you. Most customers actually, they'd love to hear from you. Talk to them, right? And I don't mean go and have a look and see what problems and things that the, uh, the help desk logged. I mean, just go and have an open conversation with them. So first, you know, again, statement of the obvious here, I know. But start with an understanding of your customers in your own organization, right? So when I worked for, for Wipro, um, new guy, in the Boston office, didn't know a soul. Came out straight away to Bangalore, met a lot of people, it was great. And it just stuck in my head that so many American people had said to me, what's the difference between a baseball and a cricket ball? I don't know why, but anyway, they did, okay? And so when I was in Bangalore, I bought a cricket ball. And I put it on my desk, so next time an American comes around and asks me, I can say, well, that's actually a cricket ball. So there we go, conversation starter. But that's not actually what happened. Do you know what happened? I went from being the guy in the office that nobody knew to everybody, no matter how senior, CEOs, etc., would walk over to my, Indian senior people, right? And CEOs would walk over to my desk, pick the cricket ball up, and show me how to spin it. I would pick it up and show them that I actually know how to spin a cricket ball, thank you very much. And we actually, I, suddenly, it was the best marketing tool that had ever been, ex I mean, nobody's ever thought of anything so brilliant, except for Alan who didn't think of it at all, it was a sheer accident, right? The point is, I made a connection. We had a connection point. That's all you're trying to do with your customers, have a connection. You don't need to know all about, that doesn't mean you don't want to use AI and machine learning and analytics and everything, I'm not saying that. But be open, be honest, and make a connection, right? Sometimes when you're when your website fails, sometimes when your mobile app doesn't work properly, do you know what? That's actually an opportunity to engage with your customer and go, wow, you're right. This is a real mess. We're really working on it. We're going to try and sort this out for you. You do that with them rather than leave them in the blank for two days, and they might actually come and go, yeah, these are a good bunch of people, these. Because guess what? In the real world, stuff happens. It happens to everybody. 
So how often does your organization openly share the challenges it faces? Well, guess what? Hardly ever. If we're going to really move forward with MarTech, if we're really going to move forward with customer experiences, if we're going to have genuine, proper journey maps that actually have some kind of empathy and connection with our customer, we have to change that. Yeah, we have to really change that. The other thing we have to change, although this is far easier said than done, I'll give you that, is that if we think about transformation, it means something different to everybody, right? So if you take um, the senior, most senior level, the CEO, the COO, oh, they buy into this. You know, Accenture, PwC, whoever that week has come in, and McKinsey or whoever, and they bought, oh my God, we're gonna digitally transform our organization. Good for you, okay? You take that down a level to, say, a department, well, hold on, well, I'm not gonna digitally transform the organization. I might transform this process, because it stinks. Here's where we get into the important bit, right? And you know how this works. It all comes down. Everybody's got their own plan here. Here's something that we have come across that is just, I think, amazing, and it's amazingly daft, but we found that one of the reasons both internally and externally things don't go well in the customer journey, documents, back-end documents, basic something like that, right? So I'm going to click to this. This is a, I mean, we would get sued if we actually gave you a name to this one, okay? Real life example, I'm not going to go through every step, but the bottom line is some patient was called up uh, because they had sleep problems, they were going to do a sleep study. This is the US, right? You pay a fortune for healthcare. And guess what? You expect great experience in response. This person, great healthcare. Bottom line is, you know, breaks down. Somebody didn't fill in a form properly. This website didn't work very well. Blah, 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 blah. Something that should have taken a week, a week and a half, ended up taking 16 weeks and a threat to an attorney. Right? If you don't sort this out, I'm going to sue you. All it was was a document handoff. The system, the website, the mobile app, beautiful, great job. But at some point, a human had to step in and that human typed in some incorrect data and it completely ruined everything. Now that might just sound like one example, but that is common. We just finished a study for a software vendor and it was about um, citizen services, developing citizen services, customer onboarding, right? Guess what? Found exactly the same thing. The same thing. Why did this take four weeks? You know why? Because three and a half weeks of it was a piece of paper sat on somebody's desk and couldn't get around to dealing with it. Okay, so back-end, document-centric handoffs, not sexy in any way, shape, or form, not something your average marketer would really want to get involved in, but that is the kind of thing that can ruin it all. So what does that bring you back to? change management within the organization. How does this process really, really work? How are you going to address it? You have to be holistic. It's great to have the best designers. It's great to, I mean, you know, on another day, we can talk about the value of customer data. We can also talk about the fact that you probably don't have good data. You don't have access to it. And even if you do, somebody doesn't want to share it with you. And all of those challenges, right? But these are all important things. But customer intimacy and insight is really sort of what we've been talking about a lot today. And to me, it's not about how much you know about the customer, okay? It's about making a connection, right? Just like the silly cricket ball, right? I made a connection. Just like not waiting for three weeks for somebody to, to, to sort out a form. Just like not getting back to them on time and saying, I'm really sorry, we've got a problem. Those may seem like boring, silly things, but you don't do those, and I don't care how much money you spend. That healthcare example I just gave you, that was around 15 million they spent on a new system, okay? And it came down to one person messing the whole thing up. 
But was it really their fault? Or was it the people who spent $15 million who never bothered to understand the process in the first place? Yeah? So that's really what it's all about. So first understand your customer and your organization. And I'm running out of time. I think I've actually pretty much run out of time. But um, I'd love to continue the conversation, as it says there. I mean, my, my job, my goal here today was, A, to keep you awake after lunch, because it was a really good lunch. So I wouldn't blame you. Um, but B, to get you thinking about things which you normally wouldn't, right? And to me, if you don't think about those critical elements, the document handoffs, just actually what is going to really annoy a customer as opposed to what's going to really excite them. Those are the things. I just said to somebody prior to this, I spend a lot of money too much. You might not guess it, but I spend too much money on Converse and Adidas sneakers, okay? And it's a bit of an addiction, actually. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't care about their social media presence. I don't want to be part of their team, right? I don't want any of that. I just want sneakers. That's all I'm after. Make them easy. Fair price. That's all I want. Yeah? Set the bar a little bit lower. AI, machine learning, data analytics, et cetera. Yes, that is the future. I'm not going to disagree with anybody here. But don't think we're living in the future now. There's a lot of work to do before we get there, and some of that is really basic. And with that, I'm going to shut up, unless anybody's got any questions. But I'll be around the rest of the day anyway if you do. So thank you very much. <laughs>